All right, this evening, this evening we're going to do the Scriabin Nocturne for the left hand. Now, uh, this piece uh, is difficult on a number of levels, not simply because it's uh, only, uh, you only get to use one hand, but because you, there's so many opportunities, so many so many places where you really have to play with sound. Here, sound is very important. The segregation of registration, the segregation of one type of sound from another using the same hand, it's really, it's really a great etude as well, actually. But let me just say from the, uh, that uh, poetry and drama are fused in a way in this piece that are really rather remarkable. Now, let me just start from the opening. The very first thing that's necessary is to depress the damper pedal before you begin to play. Don't just play the A flat, but press the pedal down. I'm pressing, you have to take my word for it, and I'm pressing the damper pedal. And then begin as if the piece had already begun. Try to find, try to, try to listen to the, to hear the D flat sonority in your, your mind if you can find it beforehand somehow and then press the damper and as if it's as if it's just a, a, a sound that's coming that you hear in the distance that's beginning to, to approach and to pass by All right. now this arpeggio in the left hand very quiet pianissimo it's Scriabin writes piano but in the, the bass is even quieter and this is one of those rare cases where, even if this were played with two hands, on the, the uh, fourth beat of six, you have six beats per bar, the fourth beat uh, would, should really be played uh, slightly separated. Uh, unfortunately, no matter what you do, even if you try to create a balance with the, with the, high, uh, the more stress of the G, it always sounds like chopsticks, no matter what you do. So it's better to separate the F from the G at that point by just a hair. Play them separately, absolutely. Nobody's going to be bent out of shape by that, even the academics book. Because if you... That is just uh, really unacceptable. So... That F is really nothing. The the arpeggio stays quiet. There's no. Be very careful not to make a crescendo. This is the last thing you want to do is make a heart and sleeve crescendo there. You know, it's just stay quiet. And then give us the apex of the phrase. He writes a crescendo, and on the downbeat, on the F natural, that really is the apex of the phrase. And we really must understand that structurally as the a high point of the, the, the phrase. It's not the biggest place in the piece yet. See. So, place it. Die. Give us some space, yes? And one pedal for the first two bars. One pedal. Actually, let me qualify that. I would say actually one and a half pedals. What do I mean by that? I mean, hold down the pedal and change, change the pedal slightly. A partial change of pedal on the sixth beat of the first bar. So you have a somewhat more transparent leap to the of the sixth degree from the sixth beat of the first bar to the downbeat of the next. Alright? Path release. Keep that arpeggio very quiet. And legato, a, re, a real legato. Not a false legato, but look. You see how I change from the second finger to the first finger on the D flat? So don't cheat, don't cheat. Now, for most of us who don't have hand spreads that can reach, uh, what is that, 11 notes, you have to, you have to, 
arpeggiate them. You have to break the, the chord. So do that very carefully. Avoid coming down because it's it's maybe a little awkward. You have to uh, the thing you have to avoid is making a big accent. So quietly. And remember what we spoke about, I think, in the uh, Rachmaninoff uh, prelude. When you break a chord like this, if you delay slightly the upper partial, the very upper note, separate it. It has a special impetus. And keep that. Left hand, the accompaniment in the left hand, shapely but pianissimo, not really nothing, no weight, weightless. That's very difficult to do on a piano that doesn't respond, but you must strive for that. It's very quiet. So. Again, give me the tops, a little bit more, the balance of the chords to the top of the chord, to the, to the tune, yes? Let's hear that seem natural a little bit. And then, no accent over the bar. Then show us the distance in the octave, die young, in the bass. And let's hear the G flat because the G flat has to go somewhere. We're descending from the G flat. Da ya da da yum. And you hear where the shape is? Da 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 yum. No accent, but it's a lengthening. Da 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 ya. And then nada. We want to hear the tenor voice here, which means that the accompaniment, which is now in the upper voice, has to be extremely quiet. Lift before the last note in bar five. Lift. Why? Because it's the beginning of a new part of the phrase. And Scriabin writes an accent over it. So, lift, quiet, just nothing, it's just a weightless, as quietly as you possibly can, legato and pianissimo. Yeah, so. Fortissimo, it's more forte, più, più forte, but not, no, 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 but, but full, full, long. Diadem, diadem, that A flat is long, Di, that's the, the impetus is there. Seven through eight, you can don't take the pedal off until the middle of the second beat. There. In the middle of that chord, you can take the pedal off, but you can keep pedal, pedal. You can change the pedal just over the bar, uh, over bar of three, six, seven, eight, and bar eight. You play the chord and then you change the pedal after you play the chord, the syncopated pedal, like so.